Hello and welcome my fellow agents to another build video by Orbis Doctor. First let me start this off by saying happy holidays and a happy new year. Welcoming in 2020 with the variant 2 of the Merciless Negotiator build. This one is focused more on PvE than PvP or a hybrid. And you can actually convert it fairly easily, but basically the overall idea is the basic fundamentals of having a four-piece negotiator setup, uh, as well as fairly high skill power out of it. Not to mention still getting the 10% extra rifle damage from the Overlord armaments, as well as DTE and Destructive. Not to forget Vigilant now on the chest. I chose to use a Fenris. You can actually choose to use a China chest piece if you wanted to, say, omit the DTE and kind of convert this into a PvP kind of hybrid spec. However, I did yield the best results for PvE with this particular setup. The damage is significantly higher, hitting over 500k, generally speaking. Now, let's go through some of this. It's worth noting that I did find out that Merciless and Reckless, its sister rifle, are not actually identical. The main difference is the accuracy and stability. The Merciless is significantly better. That is something I actually wasn't aware of, but it is. So definitely go with the Merciless over the Reckless. That aside, let's talk about a secondary weapon. This one is a little bit heavier on the gun spec, so you kind of need to conserve ammo or at least regenerate it. Okay, so next let's talk about the sidearm. Generally, overlap is ideal, being this is primarily a gun build, accuracy does matter. Next, we have the Overlord backpack. I chose this over strategic alignment or any other China backpack as the rifle damage and the offensive mod slot uh, yield better results than explosive damage, and that includes perfect spark. You do get better results from the setup. Next up, we have the Fenris chest with Vigilance and Destructive, uh, as well as me putting 43k armor on it. That uh, also accommodates one offensive slot, one offensive mod slot. And again, rifle damage is better than explosive, but if you have a utility slot here, you can fit in explosive to get a little bit more out of your primary weapon. And moving on to the primary gear pieces, or I guess off pieces, uh, pretty much this setup doesn't require a lot of defense and the only defense that you can get towards armor are mod slots in, in these certain slots. You can get hazard protection, but I personally prefer the skill power in this particular version of this build. Uh, damage to elites is a necessity, so make sure you have that. In on gloves, uh, rifle damage is to be put on it, and skill power again, uh, defensive mod slot for armor and armor total. Uh, holster, you're looking at about the same setup, plus a little bit of extra explosive damage. I have enough two 5% explosive damage mods, so I do have those fitted in those two yellow utility slots. Uh, the red actually technically doesn't matter because nothing you put on here uh, can actually affect your explosive damage, so whatever. And lastly, knees. This is a slot that can actually improve armor besides just a defensive mod slot, and that is with total armor. 13% uh, is the highest that I have. If you have higher, go for it. But uh, add in also one explosive mod, a little bit extra. I, I forgot to put the 5% or the other one I have in here. But your defensive mod slots, the most important things, have high base armor and highest uh, total armor percentages that you can get. I don't mind having either protection on elite, or protection from elites, or armor on kill. Either one. Personally, to me, it doesn't matter. Lastly, let's talk a little bit about skills. Uh, this one's kind of subjective. I prefer the Stinger Hive in this particular version of this build. Uh, I run just a radius, charges, and damage, as charges also decrease your refill speed. And I also run good old-fashioned Cluster Seekers. That's uh, pretty, pretty self-explanatory damage, skill haste, and extra cluster mines. Top loader top off all this damage with another 40 percent that is a pretty big boost not to mention your whole party gets it and you notice that instantly if you're running with a group especially if they're full of skill builds and i will also mention that if i wasn't if i wanted to make this the pvp hybrid i would run something like this basically a china chest piece uh with like weapon damage on it and then add in as much armor as i could 
Uh, it'd be about the same as the Fenris, frankly, but you do get an additional defensive mod slot, which is quite nice. However, you do lose, uh, basically you'd have to have a backpack with Destructive, and you would lose the DTE. So it is a trade-off. However, you would gain an additional 10% explosive damage, meaning, you know, your, your base shots being the Merciless Rifle revolving around explosive damage would be a little bit higher. But at the same time, you do less to elites, so that's the inevitable trade-off, which is fine. That's why I consider this the PvP, or sorry, the PvE version, and that would be switching more towards a PvP focus. So this is the higher damage variance of the Merciless Negotiator build. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I will also remind you that, uh, as I just recently found out, both the Merciless and Reckless do have little scopes, so hit tab and you can zoom in. That I was unaware, and again, the Merciless is a better weapon than the Reckless. Otherwise, I'll leave you with some footage, uh, me charging through some levels and some areas, and uh, that is it. This is Orbis Ductor with the Merciless Negotiator Variant 2 build. Take care.